done it, Lord. Thought it right. All was wrong. Just like the bride of the sun, I demanded my right because of my pride. But from now. peace, love, and joy. This is the day that the Lord is. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are honored to be able to share the word with you for the grass withers, the flowers fade, the word of the Lord will stand forever. And so let's study the word together. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful and thankful for the opportunity to worship, the opportunity to share, the opportunity, Father, to study your word with so many virtually. We love you and we appreciate you and we ask now, Father, that the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher, would be with us. Anoint us all to hear your word, anoint me to preach. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. Help us now as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. John chapter 4 and verses 31 through 34. John chapter 4 verses 31 through 34, and uh, today I want to read from Eugene Peterson's message translation. John chapter 4, verse 31, in the meantime, the disciples pressed him, Rabbi, eat. Aren't you going to eat? He told them, I have food to eat you know nothing about. The disciples were puzzled. Who could have brought him food? Jesus said, the food that keeps me going is that I do the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work he started. The food that keeps me going is that I do the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work he started. I want to ask the question today, what keeps you going? What keeps you going? There is a frequently used cliche that says you are what you eat. There is some real truth in it, for there is a direct connection between your health and your diet. Most of us enjoy food. We really enjoy food. Food helps to develop us. Food helps to sustain us. It's supposed to give us strength and energy. What you feed yourself should keep you energized. Listen, if everything you eat makes you want to lay down and go to sleep, one or two things is happening. Either you're eating the wrong stuff or you're eating too much of the right stuff. What you eat shouldn't make you want to take a nap. Actually, what you eat should keep you going. It's kind of what Jesus is saying in the text. Matter of fact, it's definitely what Jesus is saying in the text. Jesus tells his disciples what keeps him going. 
They're in this situation, and the text says that in the meantime, the disciples pressed him. They urged him, Rabbi, you got to eat. You got to eat. He's been teaching all day. He's been uh, doing the the work of the ministry. Rabbi, you got to eat. Aren't you going to eat? And he told them, listen, I have food to eat you know nothing about. The disciples did not understand uh, the spiritual ramifications of what he was saying. They're still thinking physically and they, they're asking who could have brought him some food and Jesus says the food that keeps me going, what energizes me is to do the will of the one who sent me finishing what he started. And that's the question that's on the table today. What keeps you going? What is your source of energy for life? What replenishes your zest for life? There are so many reasons to not keep going. As a matter of fact, there are many reasons to give up and just stop. And so many people actually have. They've already stopped. They're still alive, but they're really not living. Actually, their soul and their mind and their dreams and their ambition and they, their, their drive died a long time ago. We're just waiting on their funeral. But for those of you who can be honest, the reality is, is that some people who are living are just Ah, settling for less than they were intended to be. And don't be too hard on them because at first glance, you can't blame them. You can't blame some people for what they've experienced. Uh, Failure has zapped their strength. The sickness and the death of loved ones, especially in this pandemic, has zapped their strength. I do not know. I read the article a couple days ago of NBA basketball player Carl Anthony Towns, who plays for the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. And in this pandemic, he has lost seven of his family members, including uh, his 58-year-old mother. And they were interviewing him at the beginning of training camp for another NBA season and I just don't understand even being a man of faith even being a man with the Holy Ghost how he is excited about playing basketball I know they're paying him millions of dollars but in the last nine months he's been to seven funerals in the last nine months he's seen seven caskets and one of them his own mama was in a sickness and death of loved ones can zap your strength disappointment divorce betrayal uh, the economic collapse that's come because of this global pandemic people are giving up left and right because they are simply running out of gas they are running out of energy and I see why some people have stopped because they're tired they're tired tired of being left out and looked over tired of prayers that seemingly don't get answered tired of almost making it that's the frustrating one you almost made it you almost got there it was looking good for a while and then the rug was torn from under you you almost had the job you almost made the business successful you almost got the ministry to the place that you believe that God wanted it and it started to it's starting to take its toll there are so many people who have had the wind taken out of their sails they make you want to stop You hear their story, it reminds you of what you are dealing with and it makes you want to stop. But the question becomes, how do you keep going when everybody else is putting their anchor down and washing their nets and saying, I'm through trying? Beloved, you're not, I say again, you're not, you're not, you're not just meant to be alive. You were meant to live life more and life more abundantly. Listen, you were meant to become, develop, grow, and achieve. Let me say that again. You were meant to become, develop, 
grow and achieve. You have to have something that will keep you going uh, because guess what? You got to become, you got to become what God wants you to become. You got to become, you can't just be. I remember years ago in our church, in the launching uh, or the relaunching of our youth ministry, I bought all of our kids a shirt and they had to wear it every week to church, to youth ministry. I, and it just simply said, become. You got to become, you got to become. You're not supposed to just be stuck. You've got to become, you've got to develop, you've got to grow and you've got to achieve. But watch this, if you're going to become, if you're going to develop, if you're going to grow and achieve, you've got to keep hoping, you got to keep believing, you got to keep striving, and you got to keep succeeding. Let me say it again. You got to keep hoping, you got to keep believing, you got to keep striving, you got to keep achieving. That's the flow of life. Keep hoping, keep believing, keep striving, and keep succeeding. Even though life wants to take the wind out of your sail, if you've got the right energy on the inside, you can keep growing, you can keep striving, you can keep succeeding. And so what Jesus says in this text is I hurry to lift these particular uh, issues and principles out of this passage. Jesus says, watch this, what energizes him, don't miss this, what energizes him is the will and the work of his father. Can I say that again? He says what energizes me. It is not ambition. Uh, it is not growth as it relates to, to popularity. It is not how many likes he gets. It is not how many people visit his page. He says what energizes me is the will and the work of the father. I wish y'all would see this. I see a couple things here. When he says that what energizes me is the will and the work of, of, of the Father, what he is suggesting and what he's intimately uh, intimating is this, that when your energy comes from the will and the work of the Father, you will always have something to do. I wish y'all would see this. But some of you are bored and you say ain't nothing to do and many of you are bored even with what we call a church. As a matter of fact, some of you are not excited about uh, uh, the pandemic uh, ceasing because you do not want to go back to church as it was before the pandemic because church as it was before the pandemic had you bored to death in the first place. You always knew what was going to happen. That's why you got there whenever you got there because you knew what was going to happen at what time. You knew who was going to shout. You knew when they were going to shout. You knew who was going to fall out at the altar. You knew what the flow and that is not to illegitimate any of that but some of us need more and what I've discovered is is that you can be present in church on a consistent basis but not uh, in the will and the work of the father listen please understand my, my pastor used to say this when I was a little boy he said this he said you know he says you know you some of y'all come to church some of us want to be the church. He says there's a difference between church work and the work of the church. And the reason that some of us get burnt out is that because we spend the bulk of our time doing church work and never doing the work of the church. But Jesus says what energizes me is not church work. As a matter of fact, even though he went to the temple and he would go to the synagogues and do all of that, he would read as a good Jew was supposed to do, say his prayers as he was supposed to do. But when he discovered uh, that uh, the church was so busy doing church work and not doing the work of the church, it actually ticked him off and he goes through the temple turning over tables and he says listen you all have redefined this thing my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves it was not church work that excited him it was the work of his father and when the will and the work of the father are what energizes you you will not be bored
Lord, there's always work to do because guess what? Somebody always needs to be saved. Somebody always needs to be delivered. A, a, a neighborhood always needs to be transformed. Families who are broken always need to come back together. There are, there's economic uh, transition and transformation that ought to be happening when the will and the work of the Father are what energizes you. Then you get up every morning saying this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because I'm not bored. I've got something to do when the will mm -hmm. and the work of the father are what energizes you. Not only will you not be bored because you always have something to do, but guess what? When the will and the work of the father are what energizes you, you get the opportunity to connect with a lot of different people. Can you? Can I show it to you? Watch this. Jesus is raised the son of a carpenter. But when you look at the disciples and the aggregate, uh, uh, the aggregate of the people who were close to him, those twelve. Let's see. You got fishermen and you got a tax collector and you got a physician you got different people from different backgrounds coming together for the same cause y'all just missed this you've got different people from different backgrounds working on the same cause can I help you why in the world do we all have to be just like each other in church why in the world do we have to express our faith just like each other Ex express our worship just like each other everybody got to dance the same everybody got to shout the same we dog people out who don't dance we talk we throw shade at people who don't shout but the expression of worship is not simply an indication of tradition but it is also an indication of preference don't dog me just because I don't do it like you prefer especially when I'm doing it in a way that pleases God. Help me, help me, help me. You got to understand, we've got to have a value for different people. And when the will and the work of God the Father is, is your energy, then you are energized by the ability of God to bring in different people to do different things in his work. So here's what I see. I see in the text Jesus says, I, I could go on forever with that, but I ain't got time. I see Jesus says, listen, here is my food. Here is what energizes me. He says, to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. I see a couple things and we out of here. I, I see covenant, I see submission, and I see the combination of passion and purpose. I see covenant, I see submission, and I see the combination of, of, of passion and purpose. Let me show it to you. Watch this. He says, uh, my energy comes from doing the will of my father. In other places, he says, I only do what my father tells me to do. Jesus obligates himself to the father. Don't miss this. He, is, he has obligated his life to someone else. He has joined his will to the Father. They are connected. He lives his life for the Father. People see him living his life, but they don't see the invisible reason he's living his life the way he's living it. Can I say that again? People see him living his life but they do not see the invisible reason that is the cause for the way he lives his life watch this he's doing what he's doing he's doing what you can see for somebody you can't see i wish y'all would see this he's living the way he's living his what is visible his why is invisible. 
Uh, Mark, I think it's Marcus Buckingham and all of them who, who did that work on, uh, you know, you got to find your why and, and your why is so important and it is, please understand. And that's the reason that some of us cannot keep our energy when it comes to the work and the will of the Father because we have the wrong why. I wish y'all would see this. His why is invisible. Listen, when it gets hard it is covenant that keeps him going i wish you all would see this my why in ministry is not simply about me my why in ministry is for the will of the father and for the blessing of the people that's the reason some of us cannot keep serving because watch this your why is i and not we Oh, I wish I would see this. You will not continue to be energized if your why is only I. You, you, you won't go when you don't feel like it. You won't serve when you don't feel like it. When your why is simply an I. But when your why is we, when your why is covenant when your why has to do with somebody else then you will go listen if you're going to go through the pain of life if you're going to go through the suffering and the dejection and the failure of life and still keep a smile on your face and joy in your heart you go, you're going to need covenant because individual pursuits that only benefit that you will not be enough to keep you going when you don't feel like going. What's going to keep you going when you don't feel like going is the we. And you and I need a we. We need a we. As a parent, somebody can testify. What kept you going was your responsibility to your children. It, 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 it was when you wanted to give up, you thought a we. If, if I give up, we ain't going to make it. If I throw in the towel, we are not going to make it. Some pastor who will watch this online is people don't understand why you keep uh, toiling and you keep pushing ahead even when folk don't cooperate because it's not about you. It is a sanctified and consecrated we. It is me and God and me and God's people. It is a we that keeps us going. It is a we and there are too many people who are trying to do ministry without a we. It is all I. It is all me. It it is all my, it is all for my self-aggrandizement. It is all because I believe I'm anointed. No, sir, no, ma'am, you need a we, and that we starts with what does God want you to do? See, covenant requires I walk with God. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. Watch this. Living with the Father, as Jesus did, is a daily walk. That's why his prayer life was what, what it was. That's why he worshiped the way he did. Because living with the Father is a daily walk. It is a close walk. Uh, I, I remember the song as a little boy, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, please understand. It's, it's a close walk. Here's why. Because if I'm living in covenant with God, I must walk with him so he can transmit his will to me. <laughs> if I'm living for God, I've got to follow his directions. And to follow his directions, I got to stay with him. Uh, you, have, you ever been following somebody? And this was pre-GPS. And the frustration of following somebody, they act like they don't know that you actually following them. 
I, I, I never forget, we were, in, we were in Los Angeles. We were in Los Angeles, and I forgot who I was following, but it was my first time to Los Angeles, and we're driving, and I said, just, just, just follow me. And they're, we, and they're weaving through traffic, and, we, and I'm like, I'm trying to keep up. I'm glad God doesn't do me like that. I'm glad God does not forget that I'm walking with him. But you got to walk at his pace because watch this. Sometimes that, that's what living and walking with him, that, that was the frustration that I didn't have when I was a young pastor, understanding that you got to walk with his pace in, in, so that he can transmit what he wants you to do. Sometimes he's walking fast and when he's walking fast, you better walk fast. Sometimes he's walking slow and when he walks slow, you better not get ahead of him because he you need him for his protection and here's the one that frustrated me that sometimes when walking with God you ain't walking at all you are actually stopped you are actually not moving but what I've discovered is when he doesn't move you better not move because if you move when he's not moving you step away from his protection you step away from his power and you step out of the place of his will it's so very important that if you're going to be in covenant with him you've got to walk with him because here's what God will do God will give you orders and then give you what builders call change orders he, he'll give you change orders he, here, here it is here's the order take your son Abraham your, your only son and take him to Mount Moriah and I want you to sacrifice him okay God uh, I, 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 I'm going to do what you say. And so they go up and they, they go up to that mountain and, and Isaac is tied to that altar and Abraham has the knife out and he's getting ready to kill Isaac because God told him to but then the voice comes and says Abraham don't touch him don't don't touch him don't touch him don't touch him I've got a ram for you in the bush now what would have happened if Abraham had stopped listening God help me preach what would have happened if Abraham had said well I know what you told me and so the devil is a liar Satan the Lord rebuke you all of that and, and please understand God can give you a change order but if you are not close enough to him to hear him if you are not in tune with him if you have not been praying like you're supposed to worshiping like you're supposed to in his presence like you're supposed to you will miss the change order covenant requires me to walk with God but also covenant I gotta hurry requires me to consider negative possibilities uh, let me give you the short version. Uh, we, we love the 23rd Psalms. 23rd Psalms. Uh, but the same God that's leading me beside the still waters is the same God that has me walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I wish y'all would see this. The same one that has me by the still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down. I got the green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. Same God has got me in the valley of the shadow of death. But covenant says that when the God that I serve has me considering negative possibilities, I've got to remember that he's still the same God because the same God who's got the power to lead, I love this, I love, I love songwriters, I love, their, I love their use of words. Watch this, he makes me lie down in green pastures, but as I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he's with me. He's with me. He makes sure that there is a closeness that's necessary for the negativity that I'm going through. Covenant says that I gotta consider the negative possibilities and the negative possibilities lead me to the next movement. Watch this because I see covenant and when the negative possibilities come, I've got to embrace submission. I've got to embrace submission. Uh, Jesus says, my energy is to do the will of my father. 
I keep going out of submission, not always out of agreement. <laughs> I, I keep going not because I agree. Can I, can I be honest with y'all? Can I be honest? Uh, uh, am I the only one that when I put something in God's hands, I do have some kind of preference about what he's going to do with it. <laughs> I, I, I do, and, and sometimes I end up, even though I know he knows best, I end up with an attitude because I put it in his hands and he didn't do with it what I thought he was going to do with it. As a matter of fact, can I be really honest that there's sometimes when I'm not as prayed up as I should be and when I'm not walking in the level of faith that I should be, sometimes the only reason I put it in his hands is because I think I figured out what he's going to do with it. And then when he messes me up and says, no, it's in my hands, I'll do what I want to do with it, then I've got to watch this submit even when I don't agree. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He no longer agrees. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I still agree with us saving them. But I don't agree with this cross right now. Can this cup pass? Can, is there any other way to do this? Can this cup pass? He said, and, and, and he comes to the conclusion, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh. What keeps me going is sometimes I have to keep going even though I don't agree. I just submit it. And guess what? Some of us are going to have a hard time in this next season because we serve God out of agreement and not out of submission. We serve God out of preference and not out of submission. We groan, we do what we want to do, but guess what? That won't keep you energized. Sometimes I have to submit to what I don't want to do. I, I, I'll be honest with y'all. Um, every movement in a sermon, especially in the black tradition, is supposed to end on some kind of high note so that you have a reason to celebrate and then we, we transition to the next movement. I'm sorry. I don't know how to make submission celebratory. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I look, I, I know, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm pretty good with words, and I'm, I'm pretty good at writing, but I, I just, God didn't give me a way to make submission celebratory. Sometimes, because Jesus, watch this, Jesus is not celebrating in the Garden of Gethsemane, but he is obeying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is not celebrating in the Garden of Gethsemane, but guess what? He is strong in the Garden of Gethsemane because when he comes out of that prayer time and says, not my will, but thy will be done, then the, the soldiers come and he, he steps forward and says, you, you, you looking for Jesus? I'm he. The, the same guy who says, I don't want to do this, submits and now gets the energy y'all ain't seeing this gets the strength gets the power to say you seek Jesus take me leave the rest of them alone sometimes I got to go out of covenant sometimes I got to go out of submission but watch this here's the other thing that Jesus says energizes him in the five minutes that I have left Jesus says what's in, what energizes me is I get to complete what the father started my, my, what energizes me is to finish his work. I told you covenant, submission, and then I told you purpose and passion. Let me give it to you. Watch this. Uh, purpose keeps him going. Now, let me share with you. This message is not about how you find your purpose. I ain't got time for that. Matter of fact, 
I have some, I actually have some reasons that I think people don't find their purpose and I ain't got time to deal with that. I'll share with that another week. But, but, but may, may I explain to you in general, according to this text, what your purpose is? Your purpose is a continuation of something God already started. <laughs> I, 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 I got... I got to say it again for myself. I know it's just me, but your purpose is a continuation of something that God already started. Notice what Jesus says. To finish his work. To finish the work that he started. Can I, can I work this a minute? Watch this. Everything after Genesis is a continuation. I don't care what, birth, what God birthed in you. I don't care nothing about that. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm standing in, in, in my church right now. I, I, I founded this church. But guess what? Everything after Genesis is a continuation. Watch this. Your purpose in God, don't miss this, is connected to a move of God that's already in flow. I wish you would see this. That if you're trying to find your purpose... You ain't getting ready to start nothing. You're getting ready to join something that's already in flow. Uh, one of my mentors, the late Dr. Charles Edward Booth, said this, that, 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 that every preacher, every preacher starts off by preaching somebody else's sermon. Even Jesus. I said, what? He says, even Jesus. Jesus' first sermon, Dr. Booth said, was repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was John the Baptist's sermon. I wish y'all would see this. Everything that you're getting ready to do is a continuation of something that is already in flow. Watch this. Our job is to advance God's agenda. Let me see if I can put it this way. I got to go. I got two minutes. Watch this. Um, it's, it's a relay race. I'm done. It's a relay race. It's a relay race. Listen. The father runs lead off. <laughs> the father runs lead off. In the beginning, God. Jesus runs anchor. The father runs lead off. Jesus runs anchor. You and I, in our life, in our ministries, in our purpose, we are either running second leg or third leg, period. Now, here's, here, here is, here's how it goes. Watch this. Uh, although, if you're running second leg or third leg, although you start, you are actually continuing something that already started. Are y'all getting this? Uh, now, you, you start. Yeah, you start. You, you can't cross that line. You can't until you get, and there's a place you can't go until you get that baton. You start it. But you are only running in something that already started. Because guess what? You can't run, lead. <laughs> you ain't got what it takes. I can't run, anchor. I don't have what it takes. Watch this. My beginning and my ending, because you run your heat and then you hand it off to somebody else. My beginning and my ending are a part of a race that was already going when I started running. And guess what? If Jesus does not return, that race is going to keep going after I'm finished. I wish y'all would see this. That's why if God has give, ever given you a vision, the vision has to outlive you. The vision has to be bigger than you. Why? Because you joined a race that had started before you started and going to keep going. And the problem is we've got too many. I ain't got time to deal with this. We got too many uh, people in church that don't want to run a relay. They only want to run individual heats. 
but the reality is is that God has put us all in the same race and if your passion is to just do your part that is my purpose and my passion just let me run my heat let me not drop the baton when they hand it off to me don't let me fail in my race let me run the race that I have that has been set before me let me run it looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of my faith just let me run my race and so that when I run my race when they cremate me somebody will be able to say he fought a good fight he finished his course he kept the faith Jesus says what energizes me is to do the will of my father and to finish his work. That's why on Calvary, he says, it is finished. Let me say this and we're going to pray. Uh, the reason that some of us are walking around with passion and energy that we seemingly don't know what to do with. It's because we ain't finished. <laughs> We're not finished. God is giving you an opportunity to be in covenant with him. To do his work, to, to do his will. And I don't care if you live to be 200 years old. As long as that's on the inside of you, you'll keep working because you're not finished. You're not finished. Can I, can I be honest with you? Uh, I ain't finished. Why don't you go sit down and so, say, I ain't finished. Why don't you? I'm not finished. I got to run my heat. I got to run my heat. I got to pass it on to somebody else. That's my passion. That's my purpose. That should be your passion. That should be your purpose. To do the will and the work of the Father. And trust me, if you tap into that, that's what they meant. And I've talked about this song forever, but that's really what the saints meant. I've thrown shade on this song, but that's really what they meant when they said, I've been running for Jesus a long time and I'm not tired yet. It's not that they weren't physically tired, but there was an energy on the inside of them that said, I ain't finished. My, my late grandfather used to say, I might wear out, but I won't rust out. And so some of you, regardless of your frustration, you know in your heart, you're not finished. Run your race finish his work. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful and thankful. We appreciate you so very much for the opportunity to be in your will and to do your work. We pray now in the name of Jesus that we would keep our covenant with you and even when we don't like it, we would submit to you my Father, our purpose and our passion, help us to be finishers. Finishers, not, not starters alone, but help us to be finishers. That your will and your work would energize us. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for new energy right now, new energy for pastors, new energy for ministers, New energy for disciples, 
new energy. I pray, oh God, that when we embrace that energy, we'll glorify your name with it and further your kingdom work. In Jesus' name, amen. so wrong oh yeah just like the prodigal son oh Jesus here is my prayer oh I thought it was right but from now on this is my cry to you I need you I need you to do Tell them yes. You want to lift up your voice and tell the 